and gentlemen, you guys come to the stage, keep the applause going right now for DeAndre Johnson. I'm very nervous. This is my first time. And just like my first time, I'm gonna need my boy Stefan to record it for me. So we can go over the tapes later. Thank you. I do have my friends and family here supporting me. It's a lot different from any other thing I've ever done because most of the time my mom makes an excuse to not show up. But she's better than my dad. He hasn't given an excuse since the day I was born. Uh, I feel like stand up is one of those jobs you can't say it's your first time and people understand literally anything else. You say it's your first time, people are gonna go, we can tell. Comedy, you might have it, you might not. Right now, I feel like I don't. But, uh, a lot tougher. Uh, I was, you know, trying to come up here and feel comfortable, and, and one of the things I have is like a safety blanket. It's my do-rag. I always have my do-rag on. You can ask my friends, I keep a do-rag on me. But I actually got scared into not wearing it tonight because of a cop on the way up here. I was driving up here, and the police was behind me. And I was like, oh, cool, they're just trying to go around. So I moved over. They moved over. All right. So I moved over again. They kept going. I was like, oh. all right, they're really following me. Uh, so I just kind of dropped everything, you know. <laughs> they followed me from, I say, about seven exits all the way down. And once we got into the heart of Atlanta traffic, they pulled off. I said, oh, wow. I'm less scary than the traffic? OK. That's cool. <laughs> but you know, I learned. Now the do-rag, hey, let's get rid of it. But being black, it makes me feel good. <laughs> I kind of wish I had it while I was in Africa where I actually, you know, okay. First, let me know, I'm a veteran. I have military, I, you know, prior service, all that. <laughs> one of my first signs, well, not one of my first times getting racially profiled, that's one of my first times getting racially profiled by a black person was while I was deployed to Africa. It's the funniest thing, because I was deployed out there, it's the uh, multiple you know, branches out there, so I was with Navy, Marines, Air Force, all of us out there having fun. And I was teaching some of the, the foreign nationals, the foreign generals and all that, how to use a certain system. But they told us, hey, we're Americans, don't wear your uniform. So we had to wear like regular business casual clothes, we go out there. And I'm with a tall white guy, an Asian sailor, you know, just pretty much a bunch of white people and me. So, <laughs> so you know, they're all out there with uh, in Djibouti, you know, so I'm dealing with, you know, Djiboutian army. So they come out and the, the language in Djibouti is either French or Somali. So the guy comes out and starts speaking Somali to me. And, you know, I thought he was trying to talk, and I was just, oh, so I'm sorry, I don't understand you. So he's like, oh, I'm sorry. And he starts speaking French. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, no, 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 I, like, I don't understand you. And then the, the white NCO that was with me came up and was like, oh, sorry, bro, no. He's not the translator. He's a soldier. He's American. He's just black. <laughs> <laughs> and that wasn't, I was like, okay, I understand, you know, the one black guy. That's cool. But it's when the guy was like, oh, study, study, confused, study, study. And I'm like, wow, I just got racially profiled in Africa. How does that happen? And it probably didn't help some of the things that I did while out there. You know, I'm at work listening to rap music. I'm, you know, dancing around. I'm dapping people up. Me and my friend Dameron, he was also from uh, Hinesville, Georgia. So we was talking to each other. And it was one of the weirdest things because we made other people uncomfortable. And it's something, you know, you understand as a black person, you can't be too black. <laughs> so I used to, uh, you know, switch it up. I wouldn't listen to all rap music. I'd switch it up, listen to pop. And it's like, that's a I actually listened to until one day I was listening to Justin Bieber and a black NCO walked behind me. Come on, man, I understand we got to tone it down, but that's too far. <laughs> too far. And I was just like, all right, man, I see you on the basketball court? He said, hell yeah, you're going to see me on the basketball court. And then, we at work right now. I can't say that word. You're lucky. <laughs> a lot of time left. Uh, 
Okay, but something I've always learned growing up, well, I didn't learn it, something I was always told growing up was I look like Chris Rock. Please tell me that none of you agree with that statement. Uh, thank you. Oh my God, thank you. One of the bad things about being called Chris Rock was growing up I learned that I was funny, so now it's just much worse. And then when you don't know your father, opens the window for a lot more jokes. All right.